Welcome to the Daily Focus, November 22nd, 2021. I'm Megha Chada of Focus News, covering all things blockchain. South Korea's Game Rating and Administration Committee has reiterated its ban on NFT games. We'll take a look at what that means for both developers and gamers and a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Let's kick off with some of the top stories out of Asia today. Bitcoin mining difficulty has come closest to the level it was at just before China's clamped down on the mining sector and the crypto crash that followed back in May. The difficulty level, which is a measure of the computing power required to mine Bitcoin, dropped four consecutive times immediately after China intensified its clampdown. But according to data from BTC.com, Last week's adjustment saw an increase of almost 5%, the ninth increase in a row. However, a slight fall is expected for the next adjustment. Meanwhile, South Korea's Bitham exchange has crossed the finish line, with its compliance report to the latest crypto regulations being accepted by the country's Financial Intelligence Unit. All four of Korea's major crypto exchanges, Upbid, Bitam, Coin1 and Corbit, are now officially licensed, having fulfilled all criteria of the crypto law, which that means that they can operate cash to crypto services. You can find out more at focus.news. Staying in Korea, NFT games once again the talk of the space. The chair of the Game Rating and Administration Committee said once again that it cannot allow NFT games. However, he added that not all blockchain-based games are banned. Focus News Danny Park has more on what that means. Both blockchain-based and play-to-earn NFT games are globally popular, with South Korean developers like WeMade seeing huge success. Its play-to-earn game Mir 4 was at number 8 on the game's platform Steam's most played chart Monday afternoon Asia time. However, Korean game developers are not able to release their NFT games back home, as encouraging speculative behavior is banned. Speaking at a debate on NFTs and the metaverse, Kim Kyu-cha, Korea's Game Rating Committee chairman, explained that unless the law restricting speculation is changed, the committee will continue to ban NFT games that allow in-game earnings to be cashed out. Be that as it may, Kim said the committee will welcome blockchain-based games that steer clear of cashable NFTs, but he doubts any such games will be developed, as they don't bring in profit. One expert told Forecast News the current regulations stifle growth and should be loosened up. Kim says behind Korea's strict policy in gaming stands a culture where children's education is number one, which makes video games the boss villain. For Forecast News, I'm Danny Park. Over in Laos, the government has issued new regulations for crypto miners and exchanges. The Southeast Asian nation says companies must be wholly Lao-owned with a stable financial status. In addition, they must make a security deposit of 5 million US dollars with the Bank of Laos. Focus News' Timmy Shen has more. As reported by the Laotian Times, the country's Minister of Technology and Communications specified in addition that mining companies should use at least 10 megawatts of power under a six-year extendable contract with the national electricity provider. The new rules also offer perks for crypto miners, with the government saying it will exempt power transmission and import fees for mining operations. Laos new rules for the industry come after the country authorized six firms to trade and mine cryptocurrencies back in September. That move ended a ban on crypto mining that had been imposed in 2018. According to World Bank data, Laos is one of the poorest countries in Southeast Asia with a per capita gross domestic product of just 2,630 US dollars in 2020. And report from US Department of Commerce's International Trade Administration shows that in practice, the Lao economy is highly dollarized, with the currency frequently being used for private transactions involving imported goods. For Forecast News, I'm Timmy Shan. And that's the daily forecast from our vantage point right here in Asia. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm Mika Chada. Until next time.